Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ for his indescribable gift of forgiveness. Amen. God's word we're going to spend more time with in this sermon is from Ephesians chapter 4 and 5. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. What are the three hardest words to say? If you were to base your answer on what you see on TV or in the movies, you would probably be, uh, I love you. It can be hard to put yourself out there in such a vulnerable way and possibly be rejected. Another good option would be the words, I'm sorry. We don't like to admit it when we have done something wrong to someone else. We don't like to admit our own guilt. We'd rather just pretend it didn't happen. Another difficult three-word phrase to utter is uh, maybe, you're right. We don't like to be wrong about something, whether it's fact or opinion. We like to think that we know best, maybe even better than others. So to admit that someone else knew better than you is a really tough pill to swallow. And then connected to that one is the phrase, I need you. We like to be self-sufficient. We want to take care of ourselves. To admit that you need someone else and their help, their assistance, requires eating a bit of humble pie that often doesn't taste very good. All these three-word phrases can be difficult to say at certain times in our lives. But in my opinion, there's another set of three words that takes the title of most difficult to say. I forgive you. I pray you have made a point of teaching your children that when you do something wrong, you, you say you're sorry to the person you have wronged, to the one that you've sinned against. But then on top of that, when, when someone admits their sins to you and says, I'm sorry, You're supposed to say, I forgive you. The old, that's okay, doesn't really cut it, as though it was perfectly fine to do the wrong thing that you just did. You also don't want them, you know, blowing off someone's apology or someone's confession as though um, it's really some small thing. Instead, you're hoping to instill in them the good Christian practice that you forgive the person who did you wrong. You don't hold on to it. You don't stay mad. You don't take it out on them. You forgive them. And you let them know that you forgive them. Obviously, if if this is what we expect out of our children, then this is what we must do as well. We so we try to, to make it our practice with our kids that when they get into trouble, they apologize and we also tell them, I forgive you. I wish that I could say that I do that all of the time. I wish that I could tell you that I am truly an imitator of Christ and never fail to follow through, but I can't because I haven't. Sometimes it has been simple forgetfulness or the continuation of the bad habit of the old uh, it's okay routine. But other times it's been because I just didn't want to. Some days when my kids keep doing the same thing wrong again and again, when they keep rebelling and talking back and whining and complaining, I just feel fresh out of forgiveness. Instead, I want them to suffer a bit more. I want them to really feel and understand what they did was wrong. I don't want to let them off the hook just yet. Somehow I think that this is the better way to discipline in the moment and will prevent them from turning into complete brats. It's horrible. I know. What kind of dad am I to not want to forgive my own child? Somehow, I'm guessing that all of you parents out there can relate. Really, we can all relate. There are certain times, certain actions, certain people that we just don't want to forgive. Oftentimes, it's not that we don't want to forgive at all. It's just that we don't want to forgive right now. We want to wait for a bit, either for the other one to feel more hurt or so that we can feel more anger for a while. But sometimes, it really is that we just don't want to forgive at all. We think that the hurt is too great, the crime too severe. I would bet that we all have one particular painful memory from the past, one incident that still grates us to this day that we just can't let go of. And if, you're, if you aren't already, think about that moment and that person who wronged you so badly. 
Imagine that person being right in front of you right now. And now hear Jesus' command to you. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Doesn't that almost sound insulting? Doesn't it sound unreasonable? Doesn't it make you bristle inside to be told to do this? It's, it's not right. It's not fair. I had to suffer, so they should have to suffer too. Why should I let them off the hook? We can feel weak if, someone, if we forgive someone else. We feel almost stupid if we do it too easily or quickly. We feel like a pushover, a doormat that just gets walked down. Somehow, if we don't forgive, then they can't hurt us again. There's a pastor, Will Willimon. He nailed this gut reaction that we have when he wrote, The human animal is not good at forgiveness. Forgiveness is not some innate, natural human emotion. It is natural for the human animal to defend itself, to snarl and crouch into a defensive position when attacked, to howl when wrong, to bite back when bitten. Forgiveness is not natural. But Jesus does not call us to be natural and to live normal lives. He calls us instead to be imitators of him. He commands us to live lives of love. But that isn't what we do, is it? When someone does something foolish, we like to tear them down instead of building them up. When someone speaks words of bitterness against us, we're quick to respond with anger and rage. When someone slanders us to another, we like to turn around and do the same thing right back to them. It doesn't seem to matter if they are older or younger, they have a position of authority, if they are a family or friend, we are equal opportunity haters. Where's the love? Where's the forgiveness? It's absent, missing, lost in our own sinful desire to serve myself and preserve my ego. Imitators of God were anything but that. We are so consumed with our own self-interest, we don't have time for compassion and kindness. So driven to revenge and malice, we have no interest in forgiveness. It's the complete opposite of what God desires. And instead it plays right into the wishes of our enemy, the devil. And the natural thing for God to do with us would be to just that eternal condemnation in the lake of fire. I mean, why would he bother to deal with such rebellious people as us? Why wouldn't this almighty being just smash us out of existence the moment we stepped out of line? But God is very clearly unnatural. Over and over again in the pages of our Bible, we see his unnatural treatment of man. Adam and Eve betraying his trust And he gives them the promise of salvation. An entire nation of followers refusing to listen to him and enter their promised land. But he stays with them for hundreds of years more. King David taking advantage of one of his subjects, then murdering and lying to cover it up. And he's not put him to death. Again and again, we see the unnatural thing coming from the Lord. Forgiveness. And it may seem unnatural to us, but it's perfectly natural for God. His nature is different from ours. He's all about love, and not for himself, but for us. It was love that sent Jesus, the only Son of God. It was love that was born in a barn, a place totally unfit for the King of Kings. It was love that led Jesus to live a life overflowing with love, offering forgiveness to the sinful, the despised, the accused, the downtrodden. It was love that caused him to march to a cross, not of his own making, but one built from the sins of millions of unloving souls. It could only be love that would allow him to say to those who wrongly crucified him, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It was love that moved him to do the most unnatural thing, to give his own life up as a sacrifice to his Father. And with that fragrant offering of death, mingled with love, of blood mixed with holiness and grace, our sins were paid for. Having risen from death in victory, having ascended into heaven with power, Jesus now looks upon us, and says, I forgive you. For all the times you tore others down, for every time you acted in anger, for all the moments you you could not love, for every instance when you would not forgive, for an entire lifetime of not imitating me, I forgive you. And now listen to Jesus' command to us again. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. How does it sound to you now? Does it not bristle so much? Does it not sound so insulting? That's because we now see what forgiveness truly is and what it does. Forgiveness is putting ourselves to death. It is giving up ourselves to others. It is letting go of pride and ego and embracing selfless love. It's imitating Jesus. This mimicking of our Savior would seem so unnatural to us, 
if it weren't for the grace of God working in our hearts. We see again what amazing love has been shown to us and suddenly it starts to seem only natural that we would forgive one another. Suddenly we know that nothing but compassion will come from us to those who have sinned against us. And this free forgiveness from God is pretty powerful stuff, bringing forth the most unbelievable forgiveness imaginable. Brand Jean had to deal with the death of his brother at the hands of a confused police officer who thought he was an intruder in her apartment, when it turns out she actually entered the wrong apartment and shot the innocent Botham John in his own home. And initially, Brand reacted the way you or I would have at that kind of news. He was angry. He punched walls and even told his friends that he wanted that woman to die, that he wanted to kill her for what she did. But all that melted away when he heard her courtroom confession and apology. And after all the hatred and resentment, this is what Brandt said when he heard her apology. I pray that you go to God with all of your guilt, if you're truly sorry, and I'm not speaking on behalf of my family, but of myself. If you're truly sorry, I forgive you. And I know that if you go to God, he will forgive you too. I don't want anything bad for you. I only want what is best for you because I love you just like anyone else. That kind of free and full forgiveness can only come through Jesus. It is a forgiveness that God desires to come forth from each one of us. So let's take up the call of our Savior. Be imitators of God. Forgive one another, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Amen. And now this peace of God that surpasses all understanding it will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.